हमारे यहां बेतहासा जो जनसंख्या विस्फोट हो रहा है ये जनसंख्या विस्फोट हमारे लिए हमारी आने वाली पीढ़ी के लिए अनेक नए संकट पैदा करता है दैट वॉज प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन इंडिपेंडेंस डे इन केस यू मिस डिट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन हिज फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट स्पीच talked about how population explosion poses a big challenge to India and that families who limit the size of their family show tremendous patriotism but how severe is population explosion in India really you're listening to the big story the podcast where we dissect headline making news i'm your host vishnu gopinath On today's podcast I'm joined by Poonam Matreja the executive director of the Population Foundation of India Ekta Kumar a columnist who works with the European Parliament as well as senior journalist Vivian Fernandez So first let's listen to the prime minister's statement in a little more detail Hamare ha betahasa jo janasankhya vishphot ho raha hai Ye janasankhya vishphot hamare liye हमारी आने वाली पीढ़ी के लिए अनेक नए संकट पैदा करता है लेकिन यह बात मानना होगा कि हमारे देश में एक जागरूक वर्ग है जो इस बात को भली भांति समझता है वे अपने घर में शिशु को जन्म देने से पहले भली भांति सोचता है कि मैं कहीं उसके साथ अन्याय तो नहीं कर दूंगा उसको जो मानवीय आवश्यकताओं की पूर्ति है वो मैं कर पाऊंगा कि नहीं कर पाऊंगा फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट इज इंडिया पॉपुलेशन रैपिडली इंक्रीजिंग वेल यस एंड नो लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यस इंडिया पॉपुलेशन इज ग्रोइंग एंड इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बाईपास चाइना इन टोटल पॉपुलेशन बाई ट्वेंटी and according to the un by 2027 but is there a population explosion well no not really here i'm going to let vivian fernandez take over he is a senior journalist i am i am saying there is no population explosion how can there be a population explosion when 24 states and union territories out of 31 have uh, reached re- replacement levels of total fertility that is 2.1 number 1 you know 24 states are at replacement level or below that 12 of them are below replacement level number 1 number 2 the united nations has just revised its projections earlier we were supposed to india was supposed to overtake china in population growth uh, population size by 2022 it has now postponed it to 2027 it is true that india has a large population but this population is growing at a decreasing rate in fact in the last decade the growth at 17% was slower than the growth in previous decades except in 1911 1921 like vivian said india's population growth has slowed down in the past decade and this growth rate has been falling steadily over the past few decades to understand this a little better you need to understand tfr or total fertility rate which means the number of children born by the average indian woman 50 years ago tfr was at 5 which meant that the average indian woman had 5 children this number is now at 2.2 to 2.3 which is just about the replacement rate of 2.1 what's replacement rate well replacement rate is the number of children that a woman needs to have so that the population replaces itself from one generation to the next generation so india's population is growing but the pace of its growth is nothing alarming punam matreja the executive director for the population foundation of india says that the more pressing need is to provide access to family planning and increase the budget allocated for family planning india is has a huge unmet need for family planning where the nfhs data you're familiar with nfhs oh yes ma'am national family health survey yes ma'am said 
it clearly shows there is a 13% unmet need for family planning in India. This is where families want fewer children but don't have access to family planning. Or women don't have the agency to practice family planning. Both, both these are problems. So this 13% is a huge number. Now, Vivian adds that the growth of India's population is because of something called population momentum. What does this mean? Uh, India's population is growing is because of population momentum. 70% of the increase in population is because we have a very large young population in the reprodu- reproductive age group. And that is why we need to provide these people with access to contraception. So, clearly, the way forward is by focusing on increasing access to family planning. Second is an increase in access to contraception, both for men and women. And finally, Poonam says that men should be sensitized and take as much responsibility as women for contraception and family planning. Not exactly an overnight fix, but steps in this regard would certainly go a long way. That's what most experts on population control feel. However, the focus, in parts at least, is not on making these a possibility, but on punishing people for overstepping the prescribed guidelines on how many children that they can have. Earlier this year, BJP MP Rakesh Sinha introduced a bill in the Rajya Sabha called the Population Regulation Bill 2019. Among other things, this bill, if made a law, seeks to provide punitive action for having more than two living children. That is, punish people for having more than two children. And some of the ways that it seeks to do this include banning such people from holding elected office, the denial of financial benefits, and even denying food to such people under the government's public distribution system. Dark, no? Poonam adds that the focus shouldn't be on punishment or coercive action. Coercion does not, has all kinds of social problems of serious consequences. One is that it doesn't work. Two is that it leads to, um, it leads to, as I said, sex uh, ratio, uh, adverse sex ratios. And three, you know, uh, people start, For instance, there are studies to show when they implemented in some states the two-child norm, even in panchayats. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, uh, It led to people divorcing wife on paper or giving the third child for adoption. And finally, it violates the right of the child who is born due to no fault of his or hers. So, what should the focus be on? It should absolutely be on changing social norms, changing behavior, uh, which is my last. My first two are we must invest more money in family planning. We need to increase our expenditure, access, choice, and quality of care. 24 states in India have reached replacement level fertility and have stabilized their populations. And all these states did not need to do any population control. Third, if you do population control, the biggest tragedy which we have to learn from China is that sex in countries where there is a sun preference, sex ratios get really problematic, where there's a huge shortage of girls. And there is high sex selection, which means there are sex selective abortions of feticide, female feticide, female infanticide. And it has it is it has very, very serious consequences for society because we are a society which not only has sun preference, but we are a society where we don't value the girl child. So any measures which are coercive and uh, control people's fertility leads to people selecting to have boys first. Now on the topic of population control, we also spoke to Ekta Kumar, 
a columnist who also works with the European Parliament to develop India-EU relations. She adds that we also need to focus on making the most of the population that we currently have. While one side of the coin aims to enable good family planning practices, the other side focuses on doing the most that we can with what we have. You know, this whole demographic dividend we've been hearing about for so long, we're actually poised to make full use of it. Mm-hmm. But having said that, that is possible only if we provide uh, the youth the right opportunity. Like there is so much, um, there has been a lot of, uh, there's been a big question mark on job data, right? And unemployment. Now the fact is, if we have young people who are willing to work, but if you don't have jobs, then we lose that opportunity. Also, if we continue to grow at the rate with which we are growing, the fact is when resources are limited, we have a large number of people vying for the same pile. So again, this you can speak about like uh, choose any or all. There is an uh, environmental cost to this. There is water cost. I mean, the fact is water is going to be the single largest problem facing us. And uh, if you add like a billion people a year, I mean, uh, so whether it's environment, whether it's water, there will be outbreak of diseases. Um, there will be social unrest, uh, migration. You, you've seen that already, right? It's causing political instability, not just social instability across the world. So it brings with it, a growing population will bring with it its own set of challenges. And for India in particular, you'll be stuck with not just a very large population, but a large proportion of which are going to be... um... That was Ekta. So yes, India's population is growing, but not at an alarming rate. And population explosion? Well, as the experts say, The country isn't facing a population explosion and what needs to be done now is to focus on population stabilization and not through coercive measures. Before I go, I'm going to toss it over to Vivian one last time. All along we have been speaking about a demographic dividend and now suddenly the Prime Minister speaks about a population explosion when the facts show that there is no explosion, but the population is growing at a decreasing rate what we need to do is population stabilization and not population control. As I said, you know, you delay the age at first marriage, or you must shrink the reproductive age by you know, getting people to have their first, uh, first child um, later by spacing out the number of children, by providing them education, by providing educa- uh, job opportunities. In all these way, ways, people will voluntarily themselves I have smaller families. No one wants to have a large family. People know themselves, you know, that large families are a burden. They do not, do not need the government to tell them that large families are a burden. They know it themselves. I think the government, government must own up to its own share of responsibility and do its bit to persuade people, to help people to have smaller families.